Kids, last time we were together, I showed you how to make a proof that included a test strip, and we talked about using the enlarger. Now, this time, we're going to take the, one of those negative strips, we're going to put it in a negative carrier, and put it in the enlarger, project the image down on your photographic paper. The photographic paper will be in an easel. So let's start by looking at the negative carriers. Here's our negative carriers. I brought out several to just show you how each enlarger will have a different type of negative carrier. Some are big and round, some are little and round, and some are kind of more, I guess, more uh, rectangular. But each has a little window, and through that window, you can see your negative. And the negative simply is inserted thusly. So here's my strip of negatives. I just put it to the one I want to make an enlargement of, get squared away. Put this down like this, and I'm ready to go into the dark room and put this into the uh, enlarger. The last time we were together, we made a proof sheet, and the proof sheet kind of looks like this. And all we did is put, first we put down the photographic paper, put our negatives on top of it, and a sheet of glass. Remember that? Now this time, we're going to be using easels to hold our paper, and I want to show you two different types. There's many different types of easels, but here are the two types we have at North Hanover. Here is one type of easel that we have. It's called an 8x10 easel, holds 8x10 paper, and it gives you a full 8x10 image. Let me show you how it works. So with this easel, you simply lift up the, uh, the little uh, top part, you take your photographic paper, you put it in so that it's snug with these little knobs. There's little knobs here, just like that. And then usually I put my hand on it like this and then close it like that. And now you're ready to project your image onto the photographic paper. Let me show you what the image looks like when you're done. Uh, it has little white borders all the way around it, quite even, quite even. Uh, and it re represents a, a rectangular a format. Now the only problem with this type of easel, even though it's very quick and easy, is that it actually cuts off the right and the left of your 35 millimeter format. So your 35 millimeter format and the 8x10 paper are incompatible. So I have a different easel just for you if you want to print the full frame and let me show it to you. Here is a full frame 35 millimeter easel. The paper goes in this way. Snug it up on the right and left and now that is ready to uh, project your image on. So here's what a full frame 35 millimeter negative looks like when printed in the full frame easel. What it does is gives you a right and left borders that are even, top and bottom in this case because it's a vertical that are a little thinner. I actually like these better but there are times where the uh, other easel more uh, 8 by 10 makes sense. All right. All right kids come on. Take your dark glasses off so you can see. This is the type of enlarger that I have in my house. I like it because it has a little motor. It makes it go up and go down. Isn't that cute? Um, now I'm going to take my negative that's already in the negative carrier. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention this. There's two sides of your film. One is shiny, and that should always go up. And the other, I don't know if you can see the shininess of the wiggle this back and forth. And then there's a dull side, and that's, that's the emulsion side. That goes down. So shiny side up, dull side down. Uh, I'll open up the head of the enlarger, and I will stick my film into the enlarger head, and it seats itself, just like so. I'll turn on the light of the enlarger using the uh, timer, and I'll open up the lens wide open. There's the image right now being projected on the easel. You'll notice that the image is square. That's because I have a square format camera. So I'm using uh, the, the first easel that I showed you. To focus, I will take a green magnifier, put it in the dead center of the image. It takes a little uh, uh, um, practice to use this. But what you're looking for is the, um, the uh, subtle black and white grain of the film. So you want to try and put it on an edge of something. But try and keep the focuser in the middle. So now watch how I do this. I don't put my eye right up to the edge, but rather 
uh, I put my, so my eyes a little further away and then I'll just slowly bring this back and forth until the grain or the image is as sharp as it's going to get. And then I'm ready to stop down the lens and make a test strip. So now I'm ready to do my test strip and just as, as a reminder, I'll stop the lens down for this enlargement, maybe about one, two, maybe three stops. I'll set my timer to three seconds, turn everything off. Now I'll grab a piece of paper, put it into the easel, thusly, close the top. I'm ready for my three second exposure. Remember, I'm going to do a test strip. Here's my first exposure of three seconds. And remember, I cover up a little bit, a little bit more, one more, so that's three, six, nine, and that last one was 12. So now I have three, six, nine, 12 seconds of exposure. I'll develop, stop, fix it, put it in a tray, bring it out, and let's look at it in the light. I'll see you outside. Okay, well, now kids, I, de I uh, developed, stopped, and fixed. Uh, just for a short fix because I'm going to throw this away, uh, our exposure. So here's three seconds, here's six seconds, here's nine seconds, and then here's um, nine, 12, 12 seconds, yeah. Three, six, nine, 12. Uh, three is too light, 12 isn't bad, but I think I'll go with nine seconds. And now let's go back into the darkroom and do a full sheet at nine seconds. Okay, so now I've put out a new sheet of paper, and now I'll give it nine seconds of exposure. I don't change the timer. I leave it at the three seconds. I simply turn it on once, again, at six, and nine seconds. Now, you guys go out and wait for me while I develop, stop, and fix the paper. And we'll look at it and see what nine seconds of exposure it looks like. Get. Here's my uh, print made now at, at nine seconds. Uh, it's, it's pretty even all the way around. Um, it's a picture of a, in case you're wondering what the heck it is, it's some garage up uh, near um, Ely in, in northern Minnesota from this last summer. So um, uh, one thing, I mean, and this print right now is fine. It looks, looks pretty good to me. Um, I'm thinking though that I might want to have a little more contrast. And the importance of contrast in black and white cannot be underestimated. In, when you take a picture of a color uh, of a red rose, when you take a picture of a red rose in color, you have that color red. But when you take a picture of that red rose in black and white, you do not have that red color. So uh, already you're sort of at a disadvantage. So in black and white photography, contrast is very important and uh, control of that is important. So how can we get more contrast? My lectures and class usually cover this, but let's go in and, and with this particular enlarger, I'll show you how I add contrast to the image. So now, with your paper that you have purchased, it has a, a variable contrast. It's called a, a variable contrast paper. And it has some advantages. You can get more contrast with it, and you can get less contrast with it. Uh, to do this, you change the color of the light that's coming through the enlarger which is set at a standard contrast. So some enlargers have these filters that are right next to it, and the, they, they're all numbered. Two happens to be standard. Two and a half gives you more uh, contrast. Three, more. Three and a half, four, four and a half, and five. One and a half, one, and down gives you less contrast. The contrast filters work better giving you more contrast rather than less contrast as a practical uh, knowledge. So now this enlarger that I have is a little different. This is the one I have in my uh, dark room at home. So, uh, if I turn this on uh, with the light on, you'll see that uh, you can see up above here little filters that are embedded actually in the head of the enlarger and I can just dial in my magenta. So as I'm moving the magenta dial here, I'll put it on about uh, 40 or, or, or 50 or 60, and that will give me more contrast for my print. 
So here we have the, a comparison of the two prints. The one in my left here is the first print I did at nine seconds with no contrast filter. Now, if I put my second print over it that I did with about a 40 uh, magenta, you'll notice that there's a little more tactile contrast. The whites seem a little whiter. The, uh, uh, the, there's an expanse of the mid-tones, the middle grays that seem a little more livelier. And if you compare the two uh, shapes uh, at the bottom middle, uh, there's just a, the blacks come out a little bit uh, more intense in uh, when we're using more contrast as opposed to no contrast. The, the, the contrast and uh, tactile feeling of this increase in contrast uh, helps this area, especially with the blacks. I'll show you that uh, again as a comparison. Now, when I did this uh, print, I, I, I did a test strip of 3, 6, 9, 12, and, and this exposure here worked uh, out very well, I thought, for the general um, global contrast and, and print values. I'd like to try something, uh, and it's called burning and dodging, and I co cover this more in, in my class, and I show you various examples. But what would happen if we made this a little darker here, made this a little darker over here, and kept this value about the same. So let's just say this whole thing was um, uh, nine seconds. Let's just pretend. Uh, so now I'll go 12 seconds, but I'll keep this at nine seconds so that the right and the left get a little darker, and then this will seem even more whiter, and there'll be a little more drama. Because remember, in black and white photography, you don't have color, so you need drama. And drama often comes through not only contrast, but burning and dodging. Some areas lighter, some areas darker. So let's go in and do that right now. I just wanted to show you uh, some of the devices we might use in uh, burning and dodging. I often make a little dodging device simply by uh, taking a piece of wire. And you, we have wire here, and you can just... I like stiff wire like this. You just cut off a little bit, and then you can cut any type of a shape that you uh, that you want. Um, for this particular or this particular area uh, that I'm going to dodge, it's kind of like a ribbon, and so I'm just going to kind of cut it like this and cut it like that, maybe a little thinner, deep, 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 deep like this. Just to show you what I'm going to do in the dark room. Um, uh, I'm, I cut out the shape that kind of matches. It can be very rough. Um, if I just put the shape down on the paper like that, it'll cause a firm line to uh, uh, be seen, and, and that, that doesn't work out at all. So uh, I make, I'm going to make sure that this shape is lifted above so it has a diffused edge, keep it moving, keep it wiggling, and uh, usually about uh, 10, 15, maybe 25 percent less exposure will make uh, any area appear lighter. And then if you want to darken an area, then you would just uh, cover everything else up and let an area get darker for 25, 50 percent. And that's usually something that's uh, noticeable. So let's go in the dark room and I'll uh, dodge that one area to lighten, keep it, keep it at nine seconds while uh, the rest of the photograph gets a little darker. And then you'll have the contrast, more contrast between the blacks and the whites. So here we are, I've got my paper out, I'm all ready to go. Uh, this time I'm going to do it 12 seconds, so that's four times on the timer. Okay, so here goes the first time, just like this. Here's one, and then here's two, and I think the fourth time I'll dodge that area. Here's three, and then finally, here's the fourth time. And I just kind of go like this to dodge it, just like that. So now I want to show you a comparison of the two prints. I have on my left the original at nine seconds. And then my picture on the right is the one I just did where I gave it a little more time, 12 seconds for everything, but I held this, this part in here at nine seconds. So it still appears white, but then there's a little, this is a little darker here, this is a little darker there. So there's a little more drama in uh, this uh, slight abstraction north of Ely. And that concludes making an enlargement. Where we start a test strip, we always do a, a straight print, they call it a straight print, so that you, it's like a map, so you know where you're going. 
And then from there, you decide whether you're going to burn and dodge, you decide whether you're going to use a contrast filter. So every time you make a print, you have to do a test strip, straight print, and then usually another couple of prints. So I'm going to say to make a print, it takes at least a half hour to 45 minutes to an hour to get it right. And you, I just want to remind you, do not take the negative out of the enlarger until I've looked at the final print and I say, it's good, you're done, and then you move on. Okay? See ya.